ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to thank you for this uh, interesting uh, visit uh, at the factory and uh, in Hamburg. Uh, I'd like to say that, sorry for my English, because it's my first, <laughs> my first speech, public speech in English. <laughs> yeah. no, I can't public believe it. Speech. I can't believe it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I had uh, one report in Berlin some years ago at the Congress, but uh, uh, my uh, uh, such report the first time, because it's, uh, it is a little bit analysis of uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the offensive equipment, and I'm proud uh, to be he uh, here because, uh, as I understand, uh, this uh, small uh, small part of uh, hysteroscopy you g you gave me uh, for uh, for testing, and I think it's it was my uh, it, w it for me it was interesting experience, <coughs> and uh, I'd like to say that. Uh, uh, I've been starting to, to use this equipment, uh, these uh, this telescopic sheaths, uh, uh, after 15th of February this mm -hmm. year. And, um, uh, but uh, I first experienced uh, with Olympic hysteroscopy uh, in 1998. Uh, it's my first uh, working place when I, I, I'm from, uh, from Samara city, uh, mm -hmm. Russia. and. Uh, I met with uh, Olympic hysteroscopy in 1998, uh, and uh, first equipment was uh, Olympus hysteroscopy. Yeah, I think this was exactly the time when our sheets came out, so we had all the new equipment then yeah. at that time, I think. Yeah. And uh, uh, 20 years ago, I was a young uh, gynecologist, and uh, the first procedure uh, uh -huh. was uh, hysteroscopy. I've been doing uh, an office hysteroscopy since 2005 and an operative procedure since 2007. Uh, in uh, 2011 I've done the research work uh, concerning, uh, concerning the hysteroscopic uh, item and during my uh, pro working practice I use uh, different use different model, models of hysteroscope, mostly uh, for Storz, uh, Wolf sometimes, the Tikon and Olympus. And first hysteroscope uh, was Olympus. Uh, the main features of uh, hysteroscopy no dilatation, no tenaculum, no speculum, no general anesthesia, and it gives patient uh, high tolerance, no pain, uh, and a clear view, which is a good um, uh, diagnostic tool. Uh, we carry out the diagnostic and operative procedures such as endometrial biopsy, polypectomy, synecurolysis, and uh, myomectomy. Mm -hmm. I'd like to show you uh, three clinical cases in the video to demonstrate the capacity of uh, tested instruments. Mm -hmm. First case, 36 years in the Paris woman um, was diagnosed uh, by a polyp on ultrasound. And uh, I started uh, with, uh, this, uh, this procedure with uh, uh, 5.25 mm sheets because I already know the mm -hmm. diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and during uh, hysteroscopy, uh, after, immediately after hysteroscopy, the uh, patient was asked to point the uh, visual analog scale score and uh, for a diagnostic procedure, uh, it was one for the rate of two. Uh, yeah, I use uh, five French grasp forceps mm -hmm. and uh, five French bipolar electrode, and total procedure time uh, was 10 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this was a gynecare five French bipolar electrode, uh, right? No, 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 uh, okay. Storz, 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 Storz. one, Storz. okay. Mm -hmm. So the sheath is now our new one? Yeah. Yes, it is. That's our new yeah. one. Uh, sheath, 5.25 millimeters, yeah. and the first step of the procedure is a yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, uh, we mostly, in most cases, we don't use a general anesthesia, and we uh, uh, first step is vaginoscopy, and uh, uh, during this step, I, fi I found uh, the uh, external os of cervix. Mm -hmm and move in uh, in the external pores. When you enter, uh, did you put on the inflow when you entered? In yeah. yeah. Okay. We use all the inflow yeah. in, this, in this case. Uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the easiest way to uh, create the uterine cavity without pain. Mm -hmm. 
we use a local vocal anesthesia. We uh, communicate with patient during the procedure, and through it's a real time. Through uh, through one or two, maybe maximum two minutes, we uh, insert the eastern scope and the internal cavity, and uh, uh, you see the tubal tubal ostium, uh, left tubal ostium with small polyp, and uh, right tubal ostium uh, without polyp. At, at the bottom of the wool, I found the uh, small polyp, it's mm -hmm. about uh, five or six millimeters, and uh, I decided to remove it uh, with a uh, five range grasping force. Five to six millimeter, you said, the polyp, the size of the polyp? Yeah, five to six okay. millimeters. The lady presented with symptoms, or this was routine inspection? Uh, it, was, uh, it was second. Uh, procedure after laparoscopic so control because okay. uh, she's going to be pregnant uh, she suffered from myoma and I performed a laparoscopic, a laparoscopic myomectomy okay. and uh, the final uh, the final step before uh, before the uh, planning of the pregnancy the hysteroscopy okay. and anyway, of course uh, during the uh, ultrasound uh, I found the uh, small polyp mm -hmm. and uh, started to uh, use polypectomy. Uh, all steps of the procedure was easy, especially insertion of the uh, grasping forceps to the operative channel mm -hmm. through the rubber cup. Okay. I liked it because uh, uh, no leakage and easy way to insert. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a real uh, situation. And uh, during the procedure I remove the polyp uh, using some special maneuvers, uh, some special movements. But uh, at the end of, of the procedure I need to calculate the pedicle of the polyp. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, with purpose of prophylactic uh, of uh, res uh, residue. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, for uh, for seconds, uh, for the last step, I need to use uh, electrode and need to use the uh, sheath 5.5 millimeter because mm -hmm. uh, we have some uh, bleed and some uh, particle of mucus yeah. uh, and endometrium mm -hmm. after the removal. Mm -hmm. And for drainage of the uh, uterine cavity, we need to outflow. Mm -hmm. And I uh, used uh, the another sheath, mm -hmm. 5.5 millimeters. Case two, uh, 47 years uh, woman, uh, she had three deliveries and uh, she suffered from abnormal uterine bleeding and uh, she was diagnosed with hyperplasia on ultrasound. And I started uh, with a uh, four millimeter sheath mm -hmm. for diagnostic tool and uh, then I changed the instruments for the biopsy, uh, changed the sheath and you can see um, uh, the steps of the procedure. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, four uh, millimeters uh, sheath, mm -hmm. uh, and we uh, perform. Uh, yeah, I perform the procedure. Perform the procedure without anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, I like this picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a nurse uh, who uh, helped me. Uh, this is my colleague, uh, she performed the uh, diagnostic uh, step and uh, mm -hmm. after that I uh, sit instead of them, of, okay. the, of him, and uh, perform the endometrial uh, biopsy. Uh, during the procedure, this is the same steps, uh, diagnostic vaginoscopy, uh, the insertion in the cervical channel, and uh, insertion to their uterine cavity. And uh, my colleague, uh, has a uh, small, uh, few experience, mm -hmm. and uh, by the way, she, uh, he, he insert uh, the hysteroscope very easy in mm -hmm. the uterine cavity, and uh, he consist, uh, consisted that it's very easy to, to, to achieve the uterine cavity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's me, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, the same procedure, yeah. uh, uh, operative step, and uh, I use uh, I used their uh, new uh, mm -hmm. cheese, 5.25 millimeters, and uh, Olymp uh, Olympus hysteroscopic five French uh, grasping forceps. Yeah. 
without calculation. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, patient without anesthesia, patient uh, watch the monitor mm -hmm. for patient, and uh, me and the patient uh, 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 impressed of uh, uh, of its procedure because during the procedure I uh, uh, after uh, after uh, the procedure I asked patient about the pain score mm -hmm. yeah. and she pointed that the pain score was for operative step one and for surgical step one two without uh, oh, any great. changes. So there's no anesthesia, nothing. No right? anesthesia, Zero. absolutely. Zero. No uh, lady pain, no. Uh, <coughs> Mm -hmm. and the, uh, and sorry, in the previous case where you had the bigger polyp of five to six millimeter, there was also only the local vocal. Or local was vocal, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I had, uh, as I said, uh, in uh, 2011, I had uh, research work, my research mm -hmm. work, uh, and different uh, different items in this mm -hmm. work, and uh, I estimated their their pain score. Mm -hmm. And uh, most uh, in in most cases, the, the pain score uh, was not more uh, three uh, three points. Okay. Well, that that lady, as you said, had three deliveries. Right? Yeah. But if yeah. you had a lady without but delivery, first, the first one uh, was uh, no deliveries. No, no deliveries. Oh. No deliveries. No right? pregnant. Mm -hmm. And and she also had a, this low one yeah. score. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, and uh, we have different different uh, type of patients. No deliverers, three deliverers, and this patient, newly Paris, postmenopausal. Okay. And in this case, uh, I uh, used uh, uh, intravenous anesthesia because mm -hmm. of obliteration of the cervical channel. Mm -hmm. So, what means zero sumitra? What is that? Zumitra, it's like mucus in, inside the uterine cavity okay. because uh, obliteration mm -hmm. of the channel and some mucus stayed uh, in the uterine cavity and uh, sometimes it uh, produces uh, pain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, many doctors, many gynecologists uh, in Russia uh, send patients to uh, hysteroscopy because uh, they, uh, they throw the polyps uh, and uh, they, uh, it's difficult for us because uh, uh, this uh, kind of pathology uh, with uh, obliteration of the cervical <coughs> canal is a risk factor for uterine perforation. Yeah. And uh, uh, I started uh, with, uh, with the smallest uh, sheath, 4 millimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after, uh, I, I'd like to show you. Uh, during the inspection of the cervical can channel, uh, I saw uh, obliteration at the level of uh, internal os, mm -hmm. and uh, I found three uh, polyps uh, in the cervical channel. Mm -hmm. One, two polyp, and uh, this small this three mm -hmm. polyps. Uh, for uh, dilatation, I need to change the sheath, and uh, I took their uh, five uh, point twenty-five millimeter yeah. sheath and dilate their. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at the internal pause uh, with the uh, help of uh, five French forceps. Mm -hmm. it, it was very easy. And uh, after that I insert the uh, insert the hysteroscope uh, the cavity and I met with the serosimetra, uh, a lot of mucus, mm -hmm. and I need to drain the uh, serosimetra and I need to change mm -hmm. uh, the sheath mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, change the sheath and the drainage the, uh, drainage the uh, cavity and uh, finally I performed uh, multiple uh, endometrial biopsy. It was difficult because the endometrial endometri uh, was very thin mm -hmm. because of postmenopause. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, and finally, uh, finally you can see the, the light. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, much better. Finally, you can see there are uh, three polyps in the cervical channel, mm -hmm. and after that I removed it uh, using the bipolar little electron. So the 10 millimeter uh, uh, polyp was that in the in the uterus or was it in the in the, in the channel in the channel? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are no millimeter. polyps. In. There are no polyps in the cavity, but in, in three polyps in, uh, in the cervical channel. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and my results uh, were available. Uh, I performed uh, six operative procedures and uh, four of them with a new hysteroscopic sheet. Mm -hmm. Uh, and advantages. First of all, marvelous view of the uterine cavity. I was impressed uh, because it's very, very good uh, picture. Uh, I achieved uh, easy. Uh, during the procedure, uh, for me, it was easy to use uh, uh, to insert the five French instrument. Mm -hmm. No leakage. And uh, uh, for most cases, it's difficult to insert uh, the instrument through very uh, narrow hole, very mm -hmm. narrow hole, but I don't know why, but uh, with a black rubber uh, cap, it, it was easy. Yeah, you have it uh, when you enter in the black rubber, I think, this is the first step, and then you have, from a mechanical point of view, you have a border over here, and our engineers took really care of that it, yeah. is, that it is a smooth border, let me say, so that you can really insert the instrument very easy. So it's good to hear uh, the good yeah. feedback from I our think the, <laughs> the, the color of the rubber cap yeah. uh, uh, helps to insert. But mm -hmm. uh, if we compare with white uh, color, I think in uh, through the white color, I don't know why, maybe for uh, it depends on the uh, viewer, uh, yeah. it's d more difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, no leakage, uh, no pain, and of course ergonomy. Uh, besides, uh, I met with some disadvantages. Uh, for example, for the complex uh, procedure, I have to use outflow sheets because we mm -hmm. need to outflow. And uh, of course, in this case, we need to have uh, three uh, uh, three sheets: mm -hmm. four, five point twenty-five, and mm -hmm. five point five. But it's not a problem. But uh, sometimes we need to change. Excuse and, me. What, what, uh, would I, a, excuse me. Hmm? what would be a complex procedure then? Uh, complex. I mean that uh, the procedure would need to use uh, two instruments, for example maybe uh, grasp and forth and uh, scissors or bipolar electro with uh, large polyps mm -hmm. because if I have small polyps I uh, remove uh, this polyp through one maneuver I took it and uh, remove it but if I have a large polyp I need to uh, divide it the polyp for some pieces yeah. and calculate the pedicle for uh, for obliteration, for example, uh, cervical channel, I need to change. Uh, I need to uh, use uh, different uh, sheets and uh, different instruments. If I uh, perform procedure, simple procedure, small polyps, mm -hmm. uh, single synecia, mm -hmm. but myoma, uh, big polyps, and uh, multiple synecia, it's complex procedure, difficult procedure. Mm -hmm. For difficult for uh, office hysteroscopy, of course, right. not for resectoscopy. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't meet with uh, Olympus bipolar instruments for five French electron. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you have or not? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And my conclusion: uh, five uh, point twenty-five meter sheets was tested. Uh, in floor, she is allowed to perform simple operative procedure. Uh, easy to perform office hysteroscopy, movement cavity, no pain, uh, uh, and uh, clear view, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think that uh, this uh, she ought to be a part of the office hysteroscopy, hysteroscopy uh, set. I think uh, in uh, advanced clinic, uh, clinic uh, who, uh, which uh, I managed with uh, different pathology. In different mm -hmm. pathology, we need uh, uh, wide, uh, wide, uh, ma many hysteroscopic instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think in my clinic, uh, a lot of instruments, uh, and uh, I manage almost all in, in, in intrauterine pathology. Mm -hmm. But well, thank you for your attention. Just back, can you uh, back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. You mentioned there is no uh, there is no continuous flow, but as long as we stay in this dimension, five or five point two five millimeter. I mean, also from other companies, you do not have uh, continuous flow. No? I mean, technically, I think it will not be possible to have inflow. I mean, two. When you say continuous flow, you mean two sheet system. Eh? Yeah. 
two G system. So two yeah. G system. Stolz has two G system. With five point. Uh, no, no, no five point. Uh, That's what I mean. I think six millimeters. How much? Six. 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 So, is it a so fifteen the French? Bitoki, Bitoki hysteroscopy. The Bitoki hysteroscopy, uh, they say the Bitoki is a 5 millimeter. it's quite a little bit bigger, but they say it's a 5 millimeter. and what they have, I think this is also what you mean with continuous flow, is they have an inflow and an outflow yeah. port, right? So, but um, not two sheets, no two sheets. Not two sheets, no. no. The Bitoki system is a two sheet two system sheets. with an inflow and an outflow. With, with which outer diameter? Which they say it's five, uh, it's five point five. Five point five, but it's five point five, so two yeah. sheets. Two sheets, yeah. But I think the Bitoki has, a, has another problem because uh, whenever you insert an instrument, did you have the experience that the inflow stucks a little bit? Because I think they are using the inflow port the same as for um, they use for the inserted instrument, right? Yeah, yeah. And so the view, the I view think, is not that yeah. good with the Bitoki It's getting one. worse, yeah. yeah. But uh, this is uh, the same, mm -hmm. 5.25, mm -hmm. because uh, as, uh, I try, I tested this uh, sheath with mm -hmm. a syringe and I, mm -hmm. uh, I watched uh, how to uh, liquid uh, saline solution mm -hmm. uh, go in uh, uterine cavity mm -hmm. through canal and I mm -hmm. uh, uh, parallel I um, insert the uh, grasping forceps mm -hmm. and I I, uh, I pointed uh, their uh, view uh, the view is worsening uh, mm -hmm. during the uh, insertion of the grasping forceps okay. mm -hmm. so so how important is this this uh, Double sheet system. How important is the continuous flow system for what you say? Complex procedures. Yeah, yeah. You say it's necessary. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. So, and if I understand correctly, what is currently available in the market? Yes, there is a two sheet system available, but the problem is if you use the inflow channel for the instrument, you have very little space for the for the fluid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to improve this. You obviously have to go bigger, bigger otherwise yeah. it will not work. Right. Is there, a, in your opinion, is there an absolute threshold, an mm -hmm. absolute limit where you say, whatever you do, but you mm -hmm. cannot exceed this and this level. You can only optimize within 6 millimeter or 6.5 or whatever. But if you go bigger than 6.5, this is not usable. Because when we talk about complex procedures, that means with anesthesia then, in that case? No, not all, um, but 50-50, uh, yeah, I think, in, in uh, half, 50% uh, percent, uh, we yeah. can use uh, anesthesia, but... Uh, the other know, half, no. No, yeah. So that means even, even this bigger instrument would, would, would meet patients without anesthesia. So there is a natural limit, no? I don't know if we can figure out what this limit is. Is that six and a half or where do you think is, a, is the limit? I think the six millimeters is the, uh, That's a limit. the limit because um, I don't know how, because we need to uh, delete the cervical channel mm -hmm. in this case yep. and I think it's painful procedure, painful step. Mm -hmm. And for 5.5 uh, we uh, sometimes, in most cases, we don't need to delete. Mm -hmm. By uh, yeah. the hard dilatations. Yeah. Yeah. But but if you have now the option, because you know, probably we cannot realize both. If you have the option and say, I need a double flow for my mm -hmm. for my complex uh, procedures, but I cannot uh, go beyond a certain threshold. That means maybe the the the, the flow will be will not be very good. Mm -hmm. But if you have a bigger instrument, you would have to use uh, anesthesia probably for the for the patient. So would you rather go and give patients anesthesia, or would you say I rather accept a problem with the visibility because mm -hmm. of bad flow or whatever? I mean, there is a trade-off. Right? We mm -hmm. we cannot pro again. We, I don't think we have really looked into this. What is what is possible within within six millimeter, but chances are that it will be difficult to have a perfect view, a perfect flow, and still no pain score for the, for the patient. Mm -hmm. Where would you, how would you balance it? Would you say, if I have to choose between one of the two, I'd rather take the, 
uh, anesthesia but have a good view for the patient? Uh, I'm afraid I don't have uh, an answer to, on, mm -hmm. on this question, but I think if we need, uh, in, in this case, in, in those cases, we, uh, when we use the general anesthesia, we can use the resectoscope. Yeah. And um, well, it's, yeah. uh, there is advantages of uh, nophilic hysteroscopy uh, <coughs> not so clear in this case. Yeah. But uh, the purpose uh, for, uh, for nophilic hysteroscopy is to uh, do without anesthesia, without dilatation, without uh, mm. minimum traumatiza trauma, mm. trauma yeah. of the cervical channel. And I think that's uh, the maximum limit six millimeters. But I think that uh, if we can do a procedure with the smallest one, mm -hmm. like uh, 5.25, it's okay. And uh, I'd like to say that it's not so... Uh, when we insert the instruments in the uh, operative channel, uh, we have uh, a good uh, good view, mm -hmm. not not bad, but a little bit worse, uh, worse uh, than uh, without instrument, but... Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but still manageable. Yeah. Okay. So, so from our concept, mm -hmm. Austin, mm -hmm. when we designed this sheath with this Dr. Fersenar, mm -hmm. did we did we intentionally target what is called their simple operative procedures? Yes, we did. We, yes, we did. We we our intention was to go for the small procedure where we have a very small polyp, for example, have a small outer diameter because. Um, it is difficult, as you said before. We have we have mechanical limitations, yeah. so we want to have a good flow. We ha want to have a very small, thin instrument. So, and you can't have everything in one single. So, what is then our our concept for what Andre calls, uh, let's say, more complex procedures? What would so, be? we have another sheath. We have the 5.5 millimeter sheath, for example, which has an inflow and an outflow. This is then the continuous flow concept you mentioned before. But one sheath. So one sheath, yes. So this would be then our next option, let me say. And then it's getting bigger. Then we are coming to 6.5 millimeter and then we are com coming back to the topic with anesthesia, etc. Does the continuous flow is as good as with a double sheath system? From my flow? opinion, yes. Yeah. yeah. And this is Can also you try the this feedback. As well? Yeah, yeah. The 5.5? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. I have... Uh, and I think this is also... Sorry. All, all, all lines, all sheaths. So how did that work for the complex cases? It's <coughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I like it, uh, but uh, I need to use uh, bipolar instruments or uh, laser mm -hmm. because I have laser, uh, mm -hmm. the laser, and uh, sometimes yeah, I, I perform polypectomy or synanculitis or uh, removing uh, the septum mm -hmm. uh, during uh, using the laser. And which size of instruments do you use then? Do you use five French or seven French bipolar instruments? Five. Five, okay. So we will have five, is it five or 5.5? 5 .5? We have 5.5 .5 with a five French working channel. Five French instruments. Yeah. Five French working channel. Mm -hmm. So, so this would be the next option for the more complex cases for you then, right? I think, I think so. It's, it will be helpful. Could we Not provide for... this with bipolar yes. electrode? Because you should try this. Yeah. I, uh, of Which course, I, I want like to try it. You have to try it. So, you know it. Okay, come on. Okay, come on. But when did you have to do it? 20, 20. 20, 20. So, this will take more than a year uh, for us to finish the development of this. Wenn er zwischen sagt, er kann noch er die Dings verwenden, gar nicht mehr. Ja. Und ich bin dann noch hier. Ja. Da braucht er aber den Generator dafür. Ne? Da braucht er den Generator dafür, da wird das Equipment nicht. Das müssen wir nicht mehr da machen. Okay, gut. So, okay. just another question, not, not really for the procedure, but when we say office hysteroscopy, what it, what is for you office? Is that is that an, uh, an outpatient section mm -hmm. of a hospital, or do you have in Russia what we have, for example, in our country, that the patients go to an office, to a real doctor's office? Uh, what I, is office for you? I, uh, for me, it's my clinic because I work in. Uh, no, 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 I uh, I work uh, in a uh, small clinic without uh, uh, patient patient. Uh, 
uh, usually don't stay overnight, only mm -hmm. uh, during the day. That's right. And I perform laparoscopy in the morning and yeah. they uh, leave the uh, clinic in the evening. Uh, but you and, don't have offices in... Yeah, uh, and in this in clinic office cleaning because uh, uh, I don't have uh, the hospital hospital uh, beds, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I have good uh, anesthesi uh, equipment for anesthesiology, mm -hmm. uh, good uh, yeah. endoscopic mm -hmm. uh, equipment. But in Russia in general, are there offices, gynecology offices, office doctors, or do they all go to clinics, the uh, patients? Uh, we have, uh, in most cases, patients uh, with uh, small pathology, polyp, small polyps, uh, uh, go to hospitals. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they stay overnight. I think it's stupid because we need to save money and uh, uh, to uh, practice this kind of <coughs> clinic like, like mm -hmm. my clinic. Not my butt. Mm -hmm. Where I went. <laughs> where I went. Uh, and, uh, the office principle and fast track principles. Yeah. Fast track, uh, I realized in whole um, in whole uh, volume because uh, I uh, use uh, mini, minimal invasive technologies. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for office hysteroscopy, a patient stayed in clinic only one hour mm -hmm. for right. uh, for documentation, for procedure, and uh, uh, and for recommendation. One hour, not more. So when patients come, let's say for general screening, mm -hmm. right, just to ch regular check, is hysteroscopy in your country the first choice, or yeah. do you do curettage or uh, what for is the progressive secret? doctors like we? Hysteroscopy. <laughs> 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 hysteroscopy, and it's difficult to fight with uh, old. Uh, uh, old knowledge, school. old yeah. school, uh, and of course, uh, my opinion uh, for the polyps, uh, cervical polyps, yeah. it's the same cervicoscopy, yeah. not curettage, and uh, for polyps, uh, the uterine cavity, of course, because we need to uh, view control and for prophylactic of recidive, mm -hmm. etc. So this progressive doctors, non-progressive doctors, yeah. is that like 50-50 or is it still 80% uh, yeah, conservative I and 20% uh, yeah. So that means the spreading of hysteroscopy in Russia is not yet so wide. Uh, because I it's, think it's really different, be mm. difference between country and country. I think the situation uh, is changing now and uh, uh, many clinics uh, have uh, uh, small hysteroscopes. And many hospitals uh, buy the hystero small hysteroscope. They do. Yeah, they do. And I think uh, uh, the situation is changing because we uh, organize some training courses uh, in Kazan, for example, mm. and I propose the Olympus to participate in these courses because mm. it's interesting. Um, many, uh, many people, many doctors from different uh, countries uh, all over the <coughs> from uh, from our country uh, arrived and uh, I uh, give uh, reports, lectures yeah. and uh, some uh, training on the uh, on the pigs uh, pigs uh, bladder. Yeah. I create such kind of animal model with uh, 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 with uh, heart of uh, uh, hands and yeah. I insert in the uh, pig's bladder and uh, we perform hysterosectoscopy and office hysteroscopy and of course we have a uh, clinical part of the, uh, yeah. so the teaching uh, I think uh, sometimes uh, step by step we change the situation and uh, if uh, five years ago uh, one from ten doctors uh, known about uh, office hysteroscopy now uh, in these days, uh, nowadays, uh, everyone knows uh, every knows about office systems. So, so what is just one more question? Uh, what is about the education of young gynecologists, the graduates? Is that part of the curriculum to become a gynecologist? Do you have to have a teaching in hysteroscopy, or is it optional? It's optional. It's optional. It's optional yeah. Okay. Do you think there is a 
But but uh, in the progressive, uh, I I like to say that yeah. uh, we don't have only progressive and conservative doctors. We don't. We have uh, progressive universities yes. and conservative universities, mm. and most of them, uh, most of progressive universities, uh, have uh, endoscopic uh, courses uh, for uh, for students, mm. uh, and uh, some are uh, you know. Competition like Olympiada, not Olympic, but mm -hmm. Olympic Games, like Olympic <laughs> Games, uh, 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 in, uh, in these universities. But the definition of curriculum for gynecologists in general is that a, is that different from university to university, or is it a country-wide guideline? It's like uh, it's like additional uh, education when uh, students um, study uh, study uh, laparoscopy or uh, titan or yeah. uh, suturing and uh, hysteroscopy. It's additional. Um, yes, but, is it, but is it per university or is yeah. it for the country the same? Uh, All over the country, one guideline. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we don't have guidelines, unfortunately, but uh, uh, mostly uh, our students uh, uh, don't study uh, the hysteroscopy, but okay. uh, it's like postgraduate uh, educational post courses. Postgraduate post courses. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a question regarding reimbursement. So, if you're doing a procedure in in a clinic. Um, or if you're doing a procedure in an office-based clinic, is there a difference in reimbursement for the same procedure, let me say? Because you can do also the procedure in, in the hospital and you can you could do the same procedure in an office-based, which doesn't make sense maybe to do it in a hospital setting, but is there any difference in reimbursement? Reimbursement is just a Okay. Uh, it depends on their on their uh, form of substance. Form of it depends on uh, government clinic or uh, private clinic. Mm -hmm. If uh, we uh, perform the hysteroscopy in private clinic, of course we ha we have a price. Yeah. And it depends on their uh, equipment and uh, exclusivity because mm -hmm. uh, in my clinic uh, we have ex exclusive uh, exclusive technique of uh, hysteroscopy we have uh, high quality equipment good uh, hysteroscopes and the price is higher than in, uh, in uh, government mm -hmm. clinics but uh, for our medicine mm -hmm. insurance, mm -hmm. insurance, mm -hmm. insurance uh, the, uh, the cost of uh, diagnostic hysteroscopy is too small, okay. but for resectoscopy it's uh, equ uh, equivalent, okay. equivalent in mm -hmm. uh, in private and in, uh, uh, in uh, government medicine. Mm -hmm. So, if we wanted to drive this, if we would say, we, I mean, we would like to spread hysteroscopy in Russia. Mm -hmm. What would be the main our main target group? Is it? medical societies or is it, as you said, individual universities where people are a little bit, as you said, conservative or... What would be the... the who could make the change in opening this, this, this market for hysteroscopy compared to the curatage procedures or... What would be a good... Because if, if we say, let's do training courses, mm. no problem, we can do training courses. But if the heads of the university says, no, 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 mm. you know, we are not interested in this is not what we think should be, should be done to our patients, for whatever reason, then the training has no meaning, right? So, uh, thank you for an interesting question, because uh, in uh, nowadays, uh, the system of education, medical education in Russia, in Russia is changing right now. Okay. And uh, if, uh, some year, if yeah, last year we have only uh, one or two years studying uh, postgraduate, uh, postgraduate studying uh, doctors. Uh, if doctors want to be a gynecologist, now uh, there uh, we change. Uh, not we government uh, mm -hmm. regulations change their uh, the system. And uh, for if a doctor wants after after six years studying wants to be gynecologist. She, uh, she or he need uh, to needs to study 
3-4 года сейчас, так я не помню. 3 years, 3 years. And of course, uh, during these 3 years, uh, the uh, gynecologist uh, have to take uh, uh, modern information because uh, during the study at the university, uh, we study in their basis, we study in their, I don't know, very simple procedure, very simple mm. traditional procedure. Mm -hmm. But a postgraduate course, postgraduate education of, uh, for three years uh, will give uh, will give uh, some modern knowledge about hysteroscopy. Yes, but, but if this postgraduate returns to his hospital and the hospital is not really open to hysteroscopy in the mind, then I think it's a problem too. Eh? I think it's a global problem. It's a global problem. <laughs> but, uh, it's a global problem. <laughs> Uh, but I do you think, think it's, it's on a positive trend for the moment? It's yeah, we have uh, such trend and a lot of people uh, come to, to our training courses. Right. And we started, my colleagues started uh, to, uh, to organize this training in Moscow in Lapino mm -hmm. last week. Last Someone week, week. Last week, week yeah. was the first course in Lapino. I uh, uh, performed it's about five or ten courses in Samara. In our in our net uh, medical net, uh, mother and child uh, with uh, yeah. uh, Olympus, uh, they uh, spent these courses. I think uh, that's uh, a lot of uh, almost all doctors know about yeah. uh, office hysteroscopy, about modern equipment. Mm -hmm. The doctors who do hysteroscopy are these the same doctors who do laparoscopy, or is there a distinct difference? It depends. For mm -hmm. me, uh, I perform uh, hysteroscopy and uh, laparoscopy. Sometimes, if uh, doctors uh, work small clinic, uh, sometimes and, only hysteroscopy. Right? Yeah, yeah, only hysteroscopy. Mm -hmm. okay. But in uh, hospitals, most, most of doctors perform uh, okay. hysteroscopy and uh, laparoscopy. Sometimes we combined in uh, one procedure, especially for treatment and fertility. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, first step I uh, do under general anesthesia, I, I take uh, uh, small uh, office hysteroscopic hysteroscope, uh, perform a diagnostic step, and uh, after that I perform mm -hmm. a laparoscopy, chromatic uh, intubation, uh, or chromosarcoscopy, mm -hmm. and uh, diagnostic mm -hmm. uh, laparoscopy. As we've spoken about um, the training, what do you think about our competitors? For example, stores, are they doing more trainings, more local trainings? What did you hear or what did you attend maybe personally? The stores? No, are there more no, I think, no, yeah, yeah. I think the most of training in Russia concerning gynecology is uh, spent with the uh, stores. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'd like to say that Mm -hmm. Olympus uh, was the pioneer of uh, our first training in Russia, as I said, in Kadar, Kadar of course. I, I, mm -hmm. It was a difficult step because mm -hmm. uh, Stort uh, refused to participate in our course and I uh, called to colleagues uh, uh, in Olympus and uh, she, uh, they, they uh, helped us. Yeah. I think I mean, it's Stolz revolutionary first step in Russia, for yeah. us. Yeah. I mean, then Stolz was in Russia when Olympus had no surgical products. Mm -hmm. yeah? So they have a very long long tradition. But this, as you said, this is changing now. Yeah. Yeah. This is really changing. I, I think, mean, today we have a I think it's good, uh, it's good for us, for doctors, because uh, uh, when we have uh, some competition, we mm -hmm. have low price. That's right. <laughs> Otherwise, we <laughs> have a monopoly. Yeah? <laughs> and the possibility to, totally, to study. Totally correct. Absolutely oh. correct. Absolutely correct. So, what would be our conclusion now from from his evaluation? So, for well, basically the my understanding mm -hmm. was the instrument does the job it was designed <coughs> for. Right. Right. I but that I think we can we can we can sell, uh, we can safely say, and, and this would not really you would not suggest for this kind of simple procedures any major modification. This is basically as good as it is, yeah. this instrument. Eh? For the more complex procedures, I mean, we can, we cannot 
let's say... First of all, we need instruments. Yeah. 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 And and I, I, I agree, and I think this was the intention of this instrument, to go for the small procedure, to go for the office-based procedures without any anesthesia. And as I think you said, or you mentioned an interesting point, you said in hysteroscopy you do have several instruments on your table, let me say. So yeah. you have a yeah. 4 millimeter, you have a 5.2, maybe 5.5, maybe also a bigger one, and it's up to you which one you use. And I think you would always start with the smallest one, which is possible, and then maybe um, change to another one if you get to know that the case is getting more complicated. So, from my perspective, um, is it, it is what you said before, we have an instrument which fulfills what it should fulfill. And, um, yeah, I think it's also the feedback I got from, from other evaluation until now, so I'm satisfied to hear what I've heard, <laughs> let me say. <laughs> but I was surprised that, uh, as I said, in 1998, I... Yes. Uh, I my first hysteroscope was a Olympus hysteroscope, and after that I had a, a long pause yes. without Olympus. You're no right. Storts. You're right. We have our instrument for quite a long time, so I think we have 20 years anniversary, something like that right now. And we are a little bit proud that we restarted it again, let me say. But even if our instruments are quite old, I think compared to the competitors, as for example Storch with the Bitoki instrument, um, they are quite good, even if they have some newer instruments, let me say, but with our inflow and outflow, and especially with our image quality, um, we are still very good with these yeah. old instruments, let me say. Does not mean that we should not work on, <laughs> on the next instruments and on the future, um, but I think the equipment we have right now is currently a good one. Yeah, and absolutely. I absolutely agree what you said before, so we have to work on some things, for example the five French electrodes, bipolar electrodes in combination with also the small sheath. Um, we are working on some things already, but um, yeah, takes some time. <laughs> I think that uh, further experience will help us to understand uh, a new maybe uh, problem or uh, uh, challenges because uh, uh, when I, uh, I, I I've been working uh, a long time with uh, short instruments mm -hmm. and I met with a problem to uh, telescope, mm -hmm. especially uh, thin telescope because um, we had five telescope uh, in clinics mm -hmm. in clinic and. Uh, we met with situation of uh, that telescope uh, were broken, mm -hmm. very easy broken, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a big problem for us because from uh, we have all uh, we uh, finally we had only one telescope yeah. because four of them was broke, broken were broken, and uh, I think uh, uh, it's 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 very important thing mm -hmm. if you don't have telescope you don't have microscope. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think uh, if I uh, will try and will buy the hysteroscope and it will be uh, work uh, works correct, mm -hmm. I think it's the most uh, the key point uh, uh, when we perform hysteroscope because mm -hmm. uh, uh, our view is a key uh, point for for mm -hmm. procedure mm -hmm. for whole procedure. Mm -hmm. If we have bad view, if we had. Uh, uh, scratches or uh, I, I have video with uh, Stolz hysteroscope where, when it was broken I, I, and I performed hysteroscopy because I was invited to a uh, clinic for hysteroscopy and when I, ma um, when I arrived here uh, they gave me a broken hysteroscope and I need to, uh, I need to perform hysteroscopy with a, uh, with a half uh, monitor oh. because it was <laughs> The lens was broken, yeah. uh, and I think it's um, the quality of the instrument is a key point factor for uh, for hysteroscopy mm -hmm. and instruments, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe just one more one more issue. I mean, we are an industrial company. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have two purposes. The first thing is when we want to spread hysteroscopy, there are there are obviously two views. One is, of course, every industrial company they want to sell product because otherwise you cannot finance your research and all this. That is clear. On the other side, 
we definitely believe hysteroscope is better than a, than a curettage. So it's also good for the patient. So if our mission is to spread office hysteroscopy more in Russia, I mean, what we, what we could consider is to say, in other countries and in other areas, we have defined something what we call a starter kit. Mm -hmm. Starter kit means a lot of people have an interest to start with something, but they say the price is very high. That's for me a hurdle. I'm a young doctor, I'm new, I don't have, you know, sufficient resources. I cannot buy the product, so therefore I cannot do the procedure. That means you have, the initial hurdle has to be, has to be small. And, and you can say, you know, maybe with the initial starter kit, you're not earning money, but at least you help to make the procedure spreading in the market. Whatever, whatever is part of a starter kit, it could be like this, but it could also have the entire kit, including let's say the, uh, the monitor, the light source, the cameras. So this can be, this can be discussed. But do you think that this could be a, a workable concept in Russia, that, that many maybe younger doctors would say, okay, the, the entry hurdle for me is small, I'm interested in, in hysteroscopy. That's the basic condition. Otherwise, if he's not interested, it doesn't matter. But he has an interest in hysteroscopy. He feels there is a resource hurdle. He cannot f afford this. Mm. This is why he doesn't start with hysteroscopy. If we bring the hurdle down, would that help to, yeah. to spread? I, I agree with you. Mm. I think that uh, all clinic, all, uh, all owners of clinic uh, count money. And of course, uh, it, uh, when we have price uh, two times more than uh, the, than the, the price uh, with the low price. Of course, uh, uh, if we have good equipment with low price, lower price, then uh, it, it helps to spread. I think, but it's it's not only it's it's not only one factor. For it's not one factor. So, as I said, doctor has to have an interest. We have to offer good training, otherwise yeah. he cannot use the instrument. It doesn't help if you say, that's a, a good instrument, it's cheap, but I cannot use it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the, there was a gynecologist from Europe, he always called it the Japanese flag. You look inside <laughs> yeah. and you see the Japanese flag, everything is red, right? So simply because they don't know how to, how to use the instrument. So you have also to do proper, uh, proper training. Yeah? So, mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. It's not one factor. Yeah? But, I mean, when you start to, to enter a market, you have to think about how to remove the entry hurdle. Mm -hmm. And maybe price is a hurdle yeah? for, for, for many doctors. I need, uh, I, I think that uh, different factors uh, uh, influenced on it. And, uh, of course, the, the cost is the most influenced factor. Uh, <clears throat> Mm. And I think that different uh, type of uh, payment for clinic because mm -hmm. most of the clinic not don't have some money for for bike or higher hyper or expensive equipment, and if we uh, propose some uh, some equivalents, some some variants of payment, for example. Um, in Russia, a lot of uh, IVF cycles uh, uh, nowadays uh, free for patient because government pay uh, like insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, when clinic uh, took money, take money after IVF cycles, uh, uh, we have some restrictions how to spend money. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main um, the main part of this uh, money we can. Uh, we can pay, uh, uh, I don't know how to say, leasing, leasing, yeah, when, yeah, we, yeah, when yeah. we rent uh, equipment. Yeah, I think it's it's good idea to, to s for spreading the equipment in Russia, because we have some special features 
I don't know how in Europe and the United States, yeah, yeah, but yeah. in Russia we have. Is that something you do in 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 OMC leasing? Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, it's uh, for for public hospital. It's uh, so difficult procedure yeah. uh, to make a contract with uh, leasing because mm -hmm. it's but for uh, private. Uh, for private, uh, for private, uh, we uh, we develop we develop uh, this is. Uh, of the leasing, leasing program mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, we have we had a conversation uh, with a company uh, who will give a leasing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but i think it will be the next uh, step of uh, develop of the private sector mm -hmm. because now it's only the first step on uh, this way yeah it's it's beginner yeah. it's the big yeah. first step how is roughly private and government in in your country? Hospitals. I think that uh, government hospitals. Still majority. Uh, okay. Twenty percent uh, of private sector. Twenty percent. So that was the lunch call, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, everything is prepared. Good. We so can continue. Let's go. Yeah. So let's go. Discussions. Thank you so much.